Now, Granite Staters are feeling the pressure and pain of economic issues right now, from skyrocketing grocery bills to the cost of filling up with gas to keeping the lights on and staying warm. We want to address many of these economic concerns tonight. Let's start with heating costs, and Steve Batari has that question. Adam, thank you. Right now, the price of a gallon of residential heating oil is $5.68. That's 82% more expensive than it was this time last year. Natural gas prices are also up. As we enter what will be the coldest months of the year, what specifically needs to change that you as governor would have power over to make sure Granite Staters don't have to worry about heating their homes? Dr. Sherman, to you first. Thank you for the question. It's clear that we could have been in a much better place than we are right now had Governor Sununu actually encouraged what we need in terms of renewables, in terms of efficiencies, in terms of, re of weatherization. Unfortunately, he did not. And not only are we facing issues of doubling of our energy prices, but the CEO of, uh, of Eversource actually has come out in the last week and said we may not have enough supplies nationally or regionally to heat our, our homes to actually provide the uh, energy that we need. Had we done this four years ago, we could have been ahead of the game. He's calling for us to have more renewables. We could have had those renewables much further down the road than right now. That delay is costing Granite Staters. They're paying the price for Governor Sununu's vetoes and for his blocking that intervention. Governor Sununu, what specifically that you would have power over as governor needs to change to make sure Granite Staters don't have to worry yeah, about well, eating their Look, homes? let's understand, uh, this hurts. It really hurts, everyone's feeling it. Uh, oil prices, it started with gas prices about 18 months ago. Then it came to fuel oil prices, the cost of your groceries at the store. Inflation is real. Bad policies out of Washington have real consequence on individuals. And it, it's hurting everyone. And even as Tom uh, just said, it's a regional, national issue. You're seeing these price spikes everywhere. Electricity is now even higher in Massachusetts than it is here. Um, you have to make the transition to renewables. We sign the net metering bill. We promote uh, solar you know, on, on low-income families' apartment buildings or uh, on folks with fixed incomes so that they get the benefit, the first at the trough for the economic benefit, while we all get the environmental benefit. We're promoting offshore wind. I'm a big believer in hydro. You know, it was the Democrats that killed Northern Pass. That was 1,200 megawatts of the cheapest renewable hydro hydropower in the country. But at the end of the day, you need a transition. We need natural gas. We need those fossil fuels uh, to, while we make that transition over the next 10 or 20 years. All or nothing doesn't work. And unfortunately, the whole country is feeling the pain. Next question from Gene Mackin. Let's talk more about the cost of electricity. It has also spiked in New Hampshire in the past three months between Eversource, New Hampshire Electric Co-op and Liberty Utilities. The energy service rate has gone up between 77 and 112 percent. Unitil's increase kicks in in December. What will you do right now, right now to help Granite Staters handle the highest electric rates in state history? Governor, let's begin with you. Well, I'll tell you what we did in September. We brought the legislature back and we put forward a plan for uh, I, my plan was for $100 million of a, a, additional assistance. Why can we do that? Because we're very smart financially. We have good financial management at the top of the level. So we have this record state surplus. It's not our money, it's your money, right? And so it, finding ways to get it back to taxpayers when they need it the most, that was the opportunity that we took advantage of and the legislature passed that. Expanding the ability for what we call lie heat, those that uh, you know, are looking for additional assistance for electricity, expanding it for heating oil, expanding it for those, for those that uh, need it the most. Um, and even some families that traditionally wouldn't qualify for those programs now can qualify for those programs. And I really encourage everyone to go to your regional cap agencies and see if you qualify. There's a lot of money out there uh, waiting to be had. So by with having good financial management, prioritizing your spending, building up the record surplus, we're allowed to reinvest those dollars right back into families. And Dr. Sherman, what would you do to help Granite Staters handle these electric rates? I did vote for that bill that came before us at, on veto day. I also proposed uh, an amendment that would have allowed weatherization before we even got to the winter, and that was blocked in the Senate. The bottom line is we wouldn't have had to be here had the governor been more proactive four years ago. He talks about offshore wind. He talks about uh, hydro. We already have hydro. We have hydro, we have uh, solar, and we have wind that could have been pr uh, much more strongly uh, supported, and these rate increases would not have been as high as they are now. We also could have had the governor's PUC could have allowed those rate increases to go in more slowly like Pennsylvania did, and it wouldn't have clobbered New Hampshire residents. I know people across the state right now, I've met them, who can't afford to heat their homes this winter even after we pass that. 
that's not necessary, it could have been prevented. Governor, you were invoked, you get 30 seconds. Well, again, you know, I, look, the, the PUC is an end of their judges, right? You, I, we nominate them, they move forward as judges. You, you can't, as governor, interfere with that. That's actually illegal. So they, they have a process they, that, uh, that lives independently. And if the PUC doesn't approve those rates, unfortunately, it means the power companies don't have the, 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 the money to buy the power. Now you're looking at brownouts. I mean, we think it's bad now. Let me tell you something. It's going to get worse, unfortunately. It's going to get worse this winter. It's going to get worse this summer, not just for New Englanders, but all across the nation. Because when the demand goes up for natural gas, there's no incentive to produce it in other parts of the country. That is a direct reflection of bad policies out of D.C. that have to be changed. You mentioned the PUC, Governor. Your nominees to the Public Utilities Commission caused an uproar when they moved to gut energy efficiency programs. Some critics have accused those commissioners of being more concerned with the welfare of big power companies than people struggling to pay their bills. Does the state need change at the PUC? Well, when they made that decision, I wrote a letter right away saying they had to find a way to reverse it. And they did. I think the legislature came back and I think Tom was supportive of that bill that came back and fixed that process. Again, I can't control their process, but when they do something that is going to have a drastic negative impact, it was too much, too fast. We take action. We don't sit back and avoid the issue. We don't talk about where it was. I love, I'm an engineer. I love the challenges of redesigning a system, finding a better way to do it. And the only way to do that is when you acknowledge something didn't work. And I went right after the PUC. I think pretty much everybody did and said, that's got to be fixed. It was too much, too fast. And we made the corrections there. So there's always a better way to do it. There's always a way to respond. Um, you have to follow the legislative process and whatnot. And, but the opportunity to redesign some of these systems, to think outside the box, to do things different than other states, that's what New Hampshire is known for. I think that's what we do really, really well. Dr. Sherman, does the PUC need a change? Absolutely. And the, the governor is rewriting history here. It was actually his pressure and Chairman Bose's pressure that, uh, aw that prompted them to pull back on the efficiencies. He actually put in place that PUC. These are his appointees. These are his people. So not only did they take away so much of the uh, energy efficiency and delayed it by a year, they also are the ones who are hitting uh, the residents of New Hampshire with these uh, abrupt doubling of prices right now. Both of those could have been avoided. Next question from Steve Botari. The U.S. Department of Energy describes advanced small modular reactors, and I'm going to quote them here, as a key part of the department's goal to develop safe, clean, and affordable nuclear power options. Would you support the development and eventual construction of one of these types of reactors here in New Hampshire? Dr. Sherman, to you first. I've worked closely with Seabrook to make sure it's safe and that it's operating safely. I've worked with C10, which is the monitoring group around it. These are all things that we have done to make sure the people of New Hampshire are protected. I think nuclear energy has to be a part of our renewable portfolio. The concern I have ongoing is how do we deal with spent fuel? That's something that has not been fully addressed, but I would be open to exploring the possibility of those micro reactors coming to New Hampshire. And Governor Sununu? Yeah, small batch nuclear reactors, uh, that is the way of the future. It's not five and ten years away. It's probably more like 50 years away, but a lot of those technologies are uh, they're safer. They have different containment systems. They're built into what we call microgrids. So it's not just one giant system on a grid where you pay $30 billion. You see the kind of the mess that's going on in Georgia with their newest mega reactor down there. But these smaller reactors that are safer, more modular, uh, better to control, I think that's really where this country is going to be going. That's probably 50 years, 60 years away down the road. So probably nothing that can really impact you know, over the, what we can do over the next couple of years. Seabrook is a great nuclear power plant, by the way, has one of the best safety rating systems. We had the, the issue this summer. We got right on it. We worked with them. Uh, uh, hats off to the folks at the Department of Safety and Emergency Management when there was that false alarm. They got, they got right on it uh, and made sure that Seabrook was held accountable to that. But overall, they have a, a great safety record. And that's really where the future, I think, of, of uh, not just renewable, but that transition off of fossil fuels is going to be.